The death of a prominent Sikh leader in Canada has been the catalyst for a major falling out between the two countries. And to understand how these problems arose, we need to look back at the events that led up to the diplomatic stoush. On June 18, Canadian Sikh leader Hadeep Singh Najjar was killed outside a Sikh temple in Surrey, a city southeast of Vancouver. September 14 saw trade talks paused between the two countries after the leaders met on the sidelines of the G20. On September 18, the relationship was severely damaged when Prime Minister Justin Trudeau accused India of being involved in the death of Najjar during a speech in Parliament. India strongly denied these claims. Allegations of government of India's involvement in any act of violence in Canada are absurd and motivated. Similar allegations were made by the Canadian Prime Minister to our Prime Minister and were completely rejected. September 19 saw Canada's Foreign Minister announce Canada had expelled a top Indian diplomat. On the same day, India asked a senior Canadian diplomat to leave the country. September 20, New Delhi issued a fresh advisory for Indian nationals and students in Canada over politically condoned hate crimes and criminal violence in Canada. Over the past number of weeks, Canadian security agencies have been actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between agents of the government of India and the killing of a Canadian citizen, Hardeep Singh Nijar. Any involvement of a foreign government in the killing of a Canadian citizen on Canadian soil is an unacceptable violation of our sovereignty. It was that extraordinary statement from Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau that sparked outrage across India. That was like a bombshell because nobody really expected something like that to come out from him. And the response from Indian side was very swift and very, very, I mean, there was a lot of anger and there was a lot of unhappiness in terms of how could you make such such an allegation without really going uh, uh, coming out with proof. And of course, Indian government New Delhi denies any kind of suggestion like this. It surprised everyone when he made this accusation from the floor of the parliament, because this isn't the first mysterious death that occurred in Canada. Not too long ago, a Pakistani human rights expert named Karima Baluch uh, mysteriously drowned in Toronto. And rather than take that up from the floor of the parliament, even though it looked like the Pakistanis might've been involved, the Justin Trudeau and the Canadian government just deferred it all to the uh, police. So the juxtaposition is what really rubbed India uh, the wrong way and surprised many, many others in the United States and elsewhere. Um, I think it was very extraordinary uh, in the sense that if you look at Canada's foreign policy in general uh, and particularly against India, there's never been such a step. Uh, but this time more so because until now there has been no evidence provided. And for a, for a state leader to go in parliament uh, and, and, and take a stand on issue uh, which is a matter of investigation and has words like potential link is very, very damaging for bilateral relations. This was a crisis which many people didn't see coming, but perhaps in hindsight, we should have. In fact, if there's any silver lining to the crisis, it's that Palestinian extremism is on the radar right now in the United Kingdom, in the United States, and certainly in Canada. And in India, the reaction from the government was strong and swift. If you're talking about reputational um, issues and reputational damage, if there's one, any country that uh, needs to look at this, I think it is Canada and its growing reputation as a place, uh, as a safe haven for terrorists, for extremists and for organized crime. And I think that's a country that needs to worry about its uh, international reputation. There's been official denial of any involvement in any kind of activities that Canada has alleged that India is part of. Uh, on their side, they have claimed to have some intelligence, some uh, intelligence, especially from the Five Eyes Intelligence Group. Uh, but India is open to seize those invest uh, those, those, those uh, uh, evidence. Uh, so I think if India is standing its ground and uh, it is believing that there is no link in the assassination of a uh, of a Canadian citizen on Canadian soil. Uh, now, the reaction otherwise in, 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 in public, there is a furor, of course. I mean, the, the, the public sentiment against Canada is very high. Uh, I think it hasn't been this negative in, in a long, long time. Uh, just because 
uh, we just because it's this this problem of Sikh diaspora of the Khalistani movement challenging India's sovereignty and integrity has been running for a very long time, and I think this is the pinnacle uh, uh, from where it's you know it has to either either the Canadian government takes certain steps to address this or India will not budge from its position. Even if by some miracle uh, tomorrow uh, Justin Trudeau uh, were to take it back or, or India, the Indian government and, and Canadian government start talking about it in background, uh, in background, even then the sentiment that you have uh, on the street in India and we are a democratic polity uh, and this sentiment cuts across political parties. I'll, I'll probably explain uh, what I mean by that. Uh, I don't think uh, the ties are getting back on the tracks anytime soon. Uh, at least uh, the view in Delhi is uh, this cuts across both parties, both major parties, the ruling party of the Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the main opposition Congress party is is um, you would need a government change in Canada to uh, see see things getting back on track.